remarks from uh, some key speakers, and then we'll follow it up with some questions and answers. Of course, we are on the record. I'll just run through who we have, um, the agencies represented this morning. We have uh, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, FEMA's Office of Response and Recovery, Health and Human Services, U.S. Coast Guard, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the American Red Cross, the National Voluntary Organizations Active in Disasters, FEMA's Office of Disability Integration, and of course we will um, we will close with a Spanish language update from our FEMA spokesperson Daniel Yargis. Also available for questions, we will have the National Flood Insurance Program and the Environmental Protection Agency. And with that, I will turn it over to Noah for a weather update. Good morning. My name is Chris Wamsley. I work with NOAA's National Weather Service. At around 7.15 this morning, the center of Hurricane Florence made landfall at Wrightsville Beach, North Carolina. It is currently a Category 1 hurricane with 90 mile an hour winds, moving slowly at 6 miles an hour out of the west. Uh, currently, there is a tornado watch in effect and will likely continue into tonight. Storm surge along the Carolina coast will continue into Saturday and in some areas Sunday night and into Monday morning. Expect higher levels of higher tides during high tide cycles and the next high tide cycle along the Carolina coast is around noon today Eastern time. I do want to emphasize that this is only the beginning. Florence is a very slow mover. We'll continue to trek along the, South, the North Carolina and South Carolina coastline for the next 24 to 36 hours. It will not get to Columbia, South Carolina until Sunday midnight morning. We've already seen a foot of rain just north of Wilmington area. We're still expecting rainfall amounts of 20 to 30 inches, some isolated spots of 40 inches. Uh, some of you may remember this is in comparison to September of 1999. The first half of that month of that year, we had uh, Hurricane Dennis and Floyd that produced around the same amount of rainfall that we are anticipating with Florence. The only difference is back then it was within 14 days and we're looking at the same amount of rainfall in three days. Some of the river levels are going to be forecast to exceed the historic levels and some of those were during uh, Hurricane Floyd. We must emphasize to, for your own safety, to not drive where water covers the roadways, especially at night. A lot of the flooding is going to start in the river stem levels later on tonight near the coastline and increase Sunday into Monday further inland. Uh, always remember, turn around, don't drown. That's the main thing that we always say. Concern beyond that continues with the track as it moves into the Appalachians Sunday into Monday and also into the Mid-Atlantic region early next week. Due to the recent rainfall we've had over the last couple of weeks, uh, it will not take that much rainfall for additional flash flooding to occur in these areas. Uh, one to three inches in a couple hours will lead to flash flooding. Um, not as much as the main stub rivers as we anticipate over the Carolinas. And finally, the National Hurricane Center's next update will be at 11 o'clock a.m. Thank you. Good morning. Neil Jacobs from NOAA. In addition to forecast and decision support from the National Weather Service, NOAA deploys assets to support recovery and response. NOAA's navigation response teams are pre-staging to assist in reopening ports as soon as possible. The National Geodetic Survey has aircraft on standby to support FEMA overflights for affected areas. 
NOAA's Office of Response and Recovery is also on standby to assist the Coast Guard in any possible chemical or oil spills. The SARSAT system is actively providing distress and specific location information to the Coast Guard. NOAA is working with local emergency managers and industry to help amplify our forecast message, including working through over 8,000 Weather Ready Nation ambassadors. Although the storm has made landfall, our work is not done. I want to say thank you to our hardworking team, from the response and recovery personnel across NOAA to our reconnaissance crews in the Office of Marine and Aviation Operations and additionally to the National Weather Service and National Hurricane Center employees who have been working 24-7 shifts. Many of these individuals have been sheltered in place for many days. Thank you. Good morning. Again, my name is Jeff Byard. I'm the Associate Administrator for Response and Recovery. I want to start this morning by again thanking the media and our partners. Uh, you've done a tremendous job in helping us amplify the message of how uh, serious and, and the potential deadly this storm uh, is and will continue to be as uh, our partners at NOAA and the Weather Center just uh, brief. This is um, not the end of it. Uh, 24 to 36 hours remain of a, of a significant threat uh, from heavy rain, heavy surge, not just in North Carolina but obviously down as we move into South Carolina. Uh, the message was very much amplified last night again through our media partners. Uh, you know, things like uh, that, that I, I witnessed firsthand about, uh, you know, Category 3 to Category 2, Category 2 to Category 1. It was very clear that um, that's a wind indicator, not a, not a uh, surge and rain indicator, which uh, has not dropped, as you can see. So, uh, again, I want to thank, uh, thank your part of being a, a, a part of our team as far as getting that message out and, uh, and to evacuate. Uh, we stand ready to support our state and local first responders. There are many areas. Uh, that are currently, uh, uh, you know, in the heart of the storm, and there are many areas that uh, that will be um, as the day uh, moves through uh, today, tomorrow, and and through the weekend. Um, as you know, there are certain areas that uh, where our first responders, it is not safe for them to respond, and we fully support that, uh, you know, by by all means. So uh, those citizens that uh, did not heed the evacuation warnings, um, you know, it's uh, it's time to stay uh, stay where you are. Uh, do the best you can to protect yourself and property and your family. Um, we are in constant contact with both uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, and also Virginia. Uh, there, at the state level, we are also have teams that are embedded at our state emergency operations centers and are in contact with our local emergency managers. Uh, both states have uh, uh, activated their National Guard as well as their emergency operations plan. Uh, as you know, our National Guard does tremendous work across our nation. Uh, and they, they just do a, a wonderful job both uh, at the national level and also their state duty uh, of protecting the citizens of, uh, of their representative states. We've also uh, partnered with our good friends and partners that you see on the stage, but heavily engaged with Department of Defense uh, as we uh, get ready to, uh, to, to respond to this. We have what we need. We have what we need uh, staged throughout the area, both as far as manpower and teams, as, as well as commodities, resources, communications. We've also heavily engaged with our, our partners at the private sector. Our focus, as you can see, uh, priority is going to be life-saving, but on the monitors it's also uh, the effort is going to be stabilizing the critical lifelines in a very uh, expedited manner. Uh, I have to reiterate, um, we have to set those expectations. This is going to be a duration. Power will be off. Infrastructure will be damaged or destroyed. Homes will be damaged or destroyed. Uh, so we have to, we need your help in, in, in level setting those expectations uh, to our citizens and to our, our state and local governments. Uh, heed local warnings. Uh, I, I can't emphasize that enough. Heed your local and state warnings. Uh, protect yourself, protect your families. Uh, don't put our first responders' lives in jeopardy. Uh, do what you need to do as part of the team as well. And that message is to our citizens, both impacted currently and that will be impacted by the uh, um, by the effects of, of Hurricane Florence. At this time, I want to turn it over to a, a good partner and a, and, a, and a dear friend, Dr. Bob Catlick with the Health and Human Services. Thanks a lot, Dr. Catlick, thank you. Good morning. I'm Dr. Bob Catlick with uh, the Health and Human Services. I'm the Assistant Secretary for Preparedness and Response. Uh, to Jeff's point, uh, we've been working closely with FEMA and our state and local partners well before the storm. Uh, Secretary Azar spoke to the governors and I've spoken to the state health officials to know what resources are in place to assist them to save lives in the event of the worst case scenario. Uh, we've also been uh, 
working very closely to declare public health emergencies in South Carolina, North Carolina, and Virginia. That will uh, ease the ability for individuals as well as hospitals to take care of folks affected by this storm. Uh, we've deployed more than 500 personnel. These are Public Health uh, Commission Corps officers who are currently working in medical shelters around the region, assisting uh, local communities, as well as several hundred uh, disaster medical assistant teams who are positioned around the region to respond if necessary, uh, should there be a requirement to assist people who have health, specific health needs. We've worked uh, extensively before the storm with state and local officials identifying individuals who are particularly vulnerable during events like this, people who are, uh, vul who are dependent on electrical equipment, such as ventilators, or people who have uh, requirements for dialysis to ensure that we know where they live and we can provide them services before the storm uh, arrives as well as during the storm. Lastly, I just want to make a point that Secretary Azar has mobilized the entire Department of HHS not only the Assistant Secretary for Preparedness and Response, but the Centers for Disease Control, CMS, and HRSA to be ready to assist our state and local partners to save lives and help those communities at risk. Thank you very much, and now I'll turn over to the Coast Guard. Thank you, sir. Good morning. My name's uh, Rear Admiral Meredith Austin with the Coast Guard. The safety of the people in the, in the hurricane's path, as well as our own members and their families, remain our top priority. And we're continuing to work in close concert with FEMA, Army Corps, and our other federal, state, local, and private sector partners. We have Coast Guard personnel embedded with FEMA, DOD, and state emergency management agencies to enable a coordinated whole of government response. The Coast Guard has positioned 40 aircraft out, immediately outside the storm's path, which is about 20 percent of the Coast Guard's total aviation assets to be ready to begin search and rescue operations as soon as it is safe to do so. In addition, we have shallow water response boat teams and deployable specialized forces to provide law enforcement, maritime security, as well as oil and hazardous materials response teams to come in immediately once the storm passes. We have over 7,100 Coast Guard members involved in the response so far and are ready to flow in more resources and assets when needed. The ports of Wilmington and Moorhead City in North Carolina and the Port of Virginia remain closed at this time. The Coast Guard and Army Corps, NOAA, and other port partners are, are prepared to restore port operations with assets that have already been pre-staged as soon as it is possible once the storm passes and it is safe to do so. For those of you in the path of the storm, we continue to urge you to stay off the water as our SAR assets, as I mentioned before, are still degraded or unavailable until the winds die down to a safe level. And one other thing is that social media is a poor, is a poor distress calling system for a number of reasons. We can't stress strongly enough that people in distress need to call 911 if they're able to do so. Some of the lessons we learned and incorporated during last year's hurricanes is the use of aggregate social media to find hotspots to know where to vector in resources. However, for one-on-one -on -one, uh, rescuing of personnel, it's, it's, it's not efficient enough, so please, we urge you to use 911 if possible. And finally, once the storm has passed, hazards may still be present. Stay in a safe location while the Coast Guard and other state and local authorities assess damage and disperse original, additional resources. Thank you. Hey, good morning. Uh, my name is Ray Alexander. I'm from the headquarters, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. I'm the director of contingency operations. Um, I'm here today to talk about uh, the Corps' uh, preparedness to respond under Emergency Support Function 3, Stafford Act, in support of FEMA and our state and local partners. Uh, but first, I'd, I'd like to uh, uh, mention uh, the support for the Department of Defense is providing, as Mr. Byard highlighted. The Department of Defense and Army have deployed over 9,700 personnel. That's active and reserve component and Department of the Army, Department of Defense civilians. In addition, uh, key uh, equipment has been uh, positioned in the area. Uh, the, uh, vehicles uh, capable of transiting high water, um, fixed wing aircraft, rotary wing, both uh, light and heavy, uh, helicopters have been positioned in addition to uh, amphibious vessels that are in the Army's inventory. Uh, to date, Department of Defense have, uh, has received over 25 mission assignments, uh, 81 million. As far as the Corps is concerned, uh, uh, the Corps is in position and prepared to respond now. Uh, all our key leaders are uh, located uh, within the Carolinas. Uh, today, our Deputy Commanding General for Civil Emergency uh, Operations, Major General Spellman, is uh, working his way to North Carolina, where he will link up with our Wilmington District Commander, Colonel Rob Clark, 
and they will uh, engage at the State Emergency Operations Center and meet with key federal, state, local, other uh, federal agency partners. Uh, in addition, uh, Brigadier General uh, Diana Holland from our South Atlantic Division, uh, she will be forward as well in both South and North Carolina today. Uh, to date, uh, the Corps has over 15 mission assignments, uh, 5.3 million, and uh, additionally uh, over 1.3 million of our own flood control coastal emergency funds that allow us to prepare for and respond to uh, flooding. Uh, in terms of uh, missions that we expect uh, to execute, temporary power is probably uh, job number one we anticipate. And uh, with that, uh, we have our specialized power planning and response teams in position in both uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia if needed. We're there with our 249th Engineer Battalion, Prime Power, and also augmented by uh, contractors uh, who will actually assist us in install in doing assessments and installing generators for critical infrastructure where needed. Um, we are prepared to do infrastructure assessments of critical facilities uh, in, in uh, collaboration with uh, EPA. Uh, assessments on water, wastewater will be conducted. Uh, and then we're prepared to uh, conduct uh, other missions as assigned, debris, housing, temporary roofing, um, uh, missions that we normally do in these types of events. Additionally, uh, we have flood, flood fight teams uh, in position in the area and material uh, to uh, mitigate uh, areas that we know that are going to flood or be able to quickly respond areas where flooding is occurring. Uh, as far as dams are concerned, I think I briefed yesterday the Corps has uh, five dams in uh, Virginia and uh, North Carolina. All those dams have sufficient uh, capacity to receive the <coughs> amount of rainfall based upon the, pre predict the prediction and also uh, the projected path of the storm. And then there are other federal dams, uh, specifically dams on Fort Bragg, North Carolina, Fort Jackson, uh, South Carolina. We have personnel there on both uh, garrisons prepared to offer technical subject matter expertise and respond if necessary. We do not anticipate any of these dams uh, failing uh, of any kind or dangers down the town river. Uh, and then there are state and local dams and private sector dams as well. We'll be monitoring uh, the status of those dams, but uh, those are actually controlled and managed, as, again, by state and local governments. And then navigation, as the Admiral said, we're working closely with uh, NOAA and the U.S. Coast Guard. We're, our uh, survey vessels, our dredges, they're in safe harbor now. Uh, but as soon as the storm passes and the sea state allows, uh, we'll be working with our partners to ensure that the ports, Moorhead City, Wilmington, uh, are open as soon as possible, Atlantic Intercoastal Waterway, and key federal inlets as well. Uh, and I, lastly, I would say uh, some things that we are planning for, potentials are uh, North Carolina 12, which uh, runs the length of the Outer Banks. It's had a history of being breached at times. We're doing uh, planning in the event there's a breach, and we're receiving assignment to repair that breach. Um, we're looking uh, for the potential uh, um, debris mission, however, debris in the form of uh, livestock, specifically hogs in eastern Carolina. There is a history of a, a large number of uh, livestock uh, being killed as a result of flooding in these storms. So we're prepared to do that. Um, we are uh, um, fully uh, uh, prepared for whatever may come. Again, our leaders are forward, and uh, thank you. I'm Charlie English with the uh, American Red Cross, and I'd like to highlight a uh, family reunification uh, website that we operate in case you have been uh, separated from your family or if you're concerned about whether your family is okay or not, and you can get to that safe and well website at redcross.org, and under the Get Help tab, it will direct you to where you can post a message uh, about uh, being safe and well in a certain location. I'd also like to uh, mention and, and ask for your consideration in giving blood. Uh, we've had to cancel over 130 uh, blood drives uh, in the impacted area, and you may be at home wanting to know what can you do to help. Uh, that's how you can help. Uh, so if you're in a non-impacted area, we would appreciate your consideration in uh, giving blood. Uh, I'd also like to ask, uh, we know we're going to need volunteers. Uh, it's going to take a lot of people uh, to help with the post-impact sheltering and distribution of emergency supplies that we partner with the government partners and other 
faith-based organizations to, uh, to operate. Uh, but we don't want you just to respond to these scenes. There needs to be some training, so we would appreciate if you would register at redcross.org and uh, any number of other fine private nonprofit organizations that you can volunteer with. We can, we can get you trained up real quick and put you to work. And at this point, and I would say we continue, of course, to transition resources to the area of impact so that we are uh, ready to do the post-impact sheltering and, and taking it care of people. So uh, with that, I'd like to turn it over to our friends with the Office of Disability Integration with FEMA. Good morning. Today, FEMA's Office of Disability Integration and Coordination remains focused on life safety for people with disabilities who've been impacted by Florence. Together with the Red Cross and HHS, we're watching New Bern very closely because that county has the highest population of people with disabilities in the impacted areas. North Carolina has requested two EMAC FAST teams. FAST teams are basically teams that go in to assess shelters to ensure that they can meet the needs of people with disabilities who are going to be there. They're using what's called the CMIST protocol where they assess communication, maintaining health, independence, services and support, and transportation to ensure that the shelters have the capacity to serve the folks that, with, with disabilities that will be staying there. The Office of Disability Integration and Coordination has deployed disability integration advisors to support Region 4, as well as the states of North and South Carolina. These disability integration advisors are on the ground to advise senior leadership on, uh, to ensure decisions being made will consider the needs of and the impact on survivors with disabilities who've been impacted by Florence. The Office of Disability Integration and Coordination is leaning forward. We are not waiting for response to be over before we start looking at recovery. We are bringing together representatives from FEMA's Individual Assistance Branch, from the Office of Disability Integration and Coordination, and our partners at the Red Cross to plan for the best way to transition people with disabilities out of the shelters and back into independent living in their communities. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Greg Forrester. I'm with the National Voluntary Organizations Active in Disaster. We're the largest association of disaster nonprofits in the nation. We're made up of 68 national member organizations, and then we have an organization in every state and territory. For the last four days, we've been working alongside of FEMA and state emergency management to make sure that our organizations are staged and ready to respond as soon as the storm clears. What we are is members of each and every community that's been disaster affected. 75% uh, of our members are faith-based organizations uh, with locations in each community across the nation. Right now, we're waiting for the storm to clear, but many of our organizations like Red Cross, Salvation Army, Southern Baptist Disaster Response are already engaged in housing and feeding missions for those that are sheltering. When the storm clears, our organizations will then stand up to go ahead and further that mission. We will also uh, be engaged in cleanup work and, uh, and other responses as needed. Right now, we're, we're uh, concentrating on volunteering and donations. We know that this nation is one that volunteers very readily. Sometimes those volunteers come in a form that we can't utilize them right away. So what we're asking for is uh, go to our website, www.nvoad.org. We have a means by which you can go ahead and register to volunteer in each state uh, that's been disaster affected. We also have a donations portal that's on there. Uh, we ask that uh, for those donations, we're looking at just corporate in-kind donations to come through for things that we know are going to be needed. The best donation is cash. Uh, what we have found is as many disasters, things arrive into the disaster zone, we end up spending uh, much more time working on donations than we do actually working with survivors. And so we ask that you don't do any clothing drives or any of those kinds of things at this point in time. We will let you know as far as what the needs are in the field. What we do know is Commodities have been staged extremely well with FEMA and with our state emergency management partners. 
Uh, we are engaged and embedded within every state emergency management office and also here at FEMA uh, at headquarters. Again, looking to volunteer, go to the website. Uh, as Mr. English stated, the Red Cross is an excellent organization to go ahead and volunteer with. You can go to our website and find all the other organizations on how you can affiliate with them so that you are prepared to respond in a coordinated way as we bring uh, response and recovery to these affect disaster affected communities. Thank you. Hola, buenos días. Soy Daniel Yargues, portavoz de FEMA. Queremos darle una actualización en español. You've been eh, listening to uh, FEMA officials up in D.C. giving updates on Hurricane Florence. The big takeaway, I think, right there, and it's something that our own weather team has been saying, this is just the beginning, folks. This storm surge we've been telling you about this morning, the flooding that comes from it starting today and goes through the weekend into Monday. So don't get a false sense of security at this point. Looking at the radar just a few seconds ago, it appears mm -hmm. that the eye of the storm is just south of Wilmington at this point, maybe around the Oak Island area. 